Mostly sunny skies today with temperatures near 80 and a northeast wind on this Friday about 10 to 15 miles per hour. Mostly clear skies around 55 tonight. Partly to mostly sunny in the low 80s Saturday, there might be a few showers and thunderstorms Saturday night in the 60s. Spotty showers and thunderstorms Sunday night and also Sunday. And the temperatures Sunday with partly sunny skies near 80, 50 Sunday night. Your life, your music, we're KLEK, 102.5 FM. From Feature Story News in London, I'm Ollie Barrett. Texts have been released which show discussion of withholding military aid to Ukraine if help for Donald Trump's 2020 campaign isn't forthcoming. Iraq's prime ministers addressed the nation to call for calm after three days of unrest. The wife of the Paris police employee who killed four officers at the city's central police station on Thursdays reportedly told officers he had a psychotic episode the night before. And the UK government's calling on Facebook not to go ahead with the encryption of messages. It's 901. Community Conversations is brought to you by Arkansas Early Learning, offering no cost childcare in Jonesboro and Northeast Arkansas. Applications at arearlylearning.org. Arkansas Early Learning is a nonprofit organization. K L E K L P Jonesboro, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council. It's now time for Community Conversations, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority Advocacy Council, or our underwriters or sponsors. Happy Friday, everyone. You're doing in a community conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Hope everyone is having a great start to this cooler morning. Yay, fall. <laughs> All right, so my special guest today is Ms. Brandy Hodges from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> it's been a crazy morning already. <laughs> <laughs> we always have little stories in between before the show starts, so I love hearing the tales about the bunny and the puppy. Oh. <laughs> you should write a book. That, well, I don't usually have the puppy, but he's staying with me while my mom gets used to her new job. And whew, you don't know how much extra work. All you parents out there, I have n- nothing but respect for you because I just have fur babies to take care of, and they're <laughs> running me ragged. Oh, my goodness. All right, so let's get into... What's happening at the library? I know you all just had the big arts and crafts fair. We did. It was so much fun. We had a, a, such a successful event. It was, we have done this for, I think this was our 11th one. We do them twice a year. And, you know, it's so much fun to do. Um, but it's always, there's always like, you know, anytime you host multiple vendors at a thing, it's just getting everyone. And this was the smoothest one we've ever had. Um, we have a, our IT professionals, um, they are, um, they come in and handle the traffic for us. Okay. And they were like, that is the best we've ever experienced. It was great. So thank you to everyone who was a vendor and everyone who came out. We um, have our theme set for next year. Um, April and September, we'll come, to, we'll get the date set, um, okay. you know, as it gets a little closer. But um, we always host those in April and September. But, you know, we've got a lot of fun things going on in the fall. Um, we started our um, fall um, schedule in September. So we do our story times um, on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, Thursdays, Fridays, and Saturdays. We have our family story time on um, Tuesdays and Wednesdays at 10. This week we hosted the Jonesboro Fire Department for a fire safety week. Oh, I saw that picture. We have our last um, fire safety week story time this morning um, with our lap sit kiddos. Um, we had the firefighters come on Tuesdays and when- Tuesday and Wednesday. And we also host a family story time every Saturday at 11, which, you know, a lot of parents will say, oh, I would love to bring my kids or my grandkids Mm -hmm. to story time, but you guys only have it during the week. Now we've added Saturdays. So Saturdays at 11, you can come and bring the kiddos, um, all ages, to our story time. We also have started hosting Saturday and Sunday programs at 2.30 called Weekend Wonders. Mm -hmm. We do something different every weekend um just to you know get the kiddos busy i was in a few weeks ago and they um, pulled out legos and um they were building buildings okay building buildings you know (laughs) 
but th we have so much fun um, with the kiddos. Um, and then we have our lap set story times every Thursday and Friday at 10. So if you have a kiddo two years old or younger, this is the perfect story time for them. We sing songs, we read some board books, oh. um, and then about halfway through, we dump a bucket of toys, and it's a great learning agility and dexterity and sharing all important things wow. for our kiddos to learn. That's awesome. I'm trying to pull up the events if my phone will act right yeah. this morning. Yeah, so on um, the afternoons, our school-age kiddos, you know, they've been in school all day learning, and then they can, they can come to the library, and we have fun, but we learn. Okay. But it's not like they're not going to be tested afterwards. Okay. So on Mondays, we have our... Um, master builders where we use that E in STEAM, the okay. engineering, where the kiddos get to learn to build things and see how a few years ago they did um, built little boats out of um, um, Legos and used um, some cardstock as a sail and we used a fan to see whose little boat would go the furthest and it's using engineering, you know, make a light craft built well and it will okay. go faster. And did the kids um, build different styles of sails to see which one would be more? I'm simple? not sure. I wasn't there okay. um, for that event. I am um, doing a lot of. If anyone's out and about on Saturdays um, <laughs> between now and the end of the month, um, all of September and October, um, I am out doing um, weekend events. Will you be at the Fall Festival this Saturday? I will be at the Blessed Sacrament Fall oh, Festival okay. um, tomorrow, um, and I will be at the Bono Fall Festival the following weekend. Wow. <laughs> so we have a lot of fun. We're doing um, bring the kiddos out. We're going to do some stories. And um, we're going to make some scarecrow crafts because mm -hmm. tis the season, my friends. Um, but we have a different after-school activity for the kids every day from 4 to 5. I do like to let parents know, you know, say you can't get there from 4 to 5. Okay. Um, if you can get there at 4.45, your kiddo can still do whatever activity it is. Yesterday, we had our first in our Thursday. Every um, month, our Thursday program changes. Okay. So we are doing a... Passport to, and each week it'll be a different country. Okay. So they will learn about a different country, their traditions, where the people, what kind of houses do people live in, what kind of food do people eat, what kind of surroundings do they live in. And so what country did they uh, travel to yesterday? I don't know. I okay. didn't make it to it. I made it to the very end, um, and I didn't even get to take any pictures, but um, it was very colorful. With a large desert. I just got oh. to see the pictures, but I didn't get to be there. And I don't like to interrupt the program. Okay. That's awesome. So I'm sure the kids really love them. I'm sure they're looking for it. Do they know, you know, prior to what country's coming up with? Um, sometimes they let me know when I put it on our social media accounts. But um, I didn't know uh, about that one. Um, but yeah, it's it's a lot of fun because the kids are the kids just show up and learn something. Okay. This um, Wednesday they did um, a type of art where you take white crayons and you draw a picture on the on the um, the paper the mm -hmm. um, white crayons on white paper and then they took little pieces of tissue paper and put them all over their picture and then soaked it in water so that the color from the tissue paper would bleed onto their painting. They just left it for a little while and then they wiped the tissue paper away and the color transferred but it didn't transfer where the white crayon was so whatever picture they drew stayed white but the oh paper goodness. turned whatever color the colored paper was and it was such an awesome little craft i'm like i'm gonna have to do that at home that's really interesting it was it was a <laughs> lot of fun um and they um i wasn't there this monday but on tuesday they had extreme steam which we do something different we're actually going to go to a big stem event hosted by arkansas state university at the end of this month where okay. they're going to bus in school children from jonesboro you know, so like a science type. i know they usually do a science not fair but they did one of these school. last year the stem event and they had a trash and show mm. which was awesome the kids used recycle things that you could recycle or things that could just be trash, and they made them into outfits. And they had a they had a trash and show. Now that would be something I would love to go to. As a seamstress, I'm always looking at how can materials be repurposed. Yeah. And upcycled. So <laughs> what the event um, later this month is um, a day full of events um, hosted by ESU for the Arkansas Science Festival. Oh, Science Festival. So that's what it's called, STEM Fest 2019. Um, but they're going to have um, 
a wide range of activities hosted by ASU Museum, Arkansas Bioscience Institute, A-State College of Engineering and Computer Science, NYIT, and Osteopathic Medicine. Okay. Um, lots of different organizations, but we're going to be there. We'll have um, some of our, um, we have a lot of um, like robots and we have okay. Ozobots and we have um, different games that the kids, there's one that just, um, it kicks me in the tush sometimes, <laughs> but it's, it's a, um, a building. You have these different, um, pieces that are different shaped and you get a, you have a card okay. and the card has a picture on it and it shows you the different shapes and tells you how many of each things, but it doesn't tell you how to do it. You just have the picture. Wow. So you have to be... Use your imagination uh -huh. and try to put this whatever together. Yeah, so, but you, it tells you all the pieces you need, and it shows you a picture, one picture. Um, and a lot of times I get halfway through it, I'm like, nope. But the kids, it's so amazing to see them complete these things. Does it tell you how many of these pieces? Mm -hmm. How, how many, many of each shape, and then you um, try to figure it out. How to, you know, there are no instructions. It's like, it's like when I bought my vacuum cleaner, and it was <laughs> not in English, and I had to figure out how to put it together. So. Aww. Uh, many people that buy from Ikea, they yes. have the same, the, <laughs> same thought process. You're learning steam, my friends. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right. So um, you have those events coming up. And then, you know, if anyone wants to follow along with what's going on at the library, go to libraryinjonesboro.org. Click on events and you can uh, narrow the search down by age group and branch uh, because you have several other branches. Soon to be eight, hopefully by the end of the year or beginning of next year. Okay. Our Brooklyn branch will be opening and we'll have our, not really a branch per se, but our Roland <laughs> library um, will be joining our fleet, if you will, of vehicles um, in the coming months. We're expecting it to be delivered um, in October or November. So we have our bookmobile that mm -hmm. has been in the works for a, about a year and a half, two years. Um, but we have been, um, we're excited. We've been um, working on getting all the designs for that. Um, and it will have its own collection on it. Um, I'm hoping it will be here so we can have it in the Christmas parade. So that'll be people's like really first look oh, to be able to see <laughs> it. Um, but yes, so um, we do have some special events going on for all ages. Um, let me just, I'm pulling up the, as Ms. Quabila said, we have where you can, it's just not letting me click on it. So we have our special events. I'm just going to re, it's, my son is frozen, so hey, there, there's that. <laughs> um, we do have some special events um, on um, Mondays, Tuesdays. Okay. Tuesdays, we had our first one this past week. So Tuesday the 1st, the 15th, and then... Um, later in the month, I'm just pulling it up. We're going to have some um, events called Zine. Um, and it is where kids, it's like a zine, I'm sorry, zine. Um, it's a shortened version for a magazine because it's a shortened version of a magazine. Mm -hmm. You can make your own DIY magazine and it's for all ages. Um, they're at the library. Will they do it on the computer or actually cut and paste? Cut and paste. Okay. You know, they're making a physical one, oh, okay. physical. Um, zine of something that they're interested in. A lot of um, zines are just um, made of like this is my DIY of the the thing that fascinates me. It's almost like a storyboard. And sort of, yeah. And then at the end, at the last meeting, they're going to trade with each other. Okay. So you can read someone else's zine. Um, but yes, so we have those events coming up. Um, we have um, mind games every Friday. So. Um, if you have a kiddo who hasn't been to one of our after-school programs, our mind games events each Friday are, you know, puzzles, okay. you know, solving problems. Um, you know, a lot of those, um, you know, getting the, the, the juices flowing, if you will, to um, think of, think your way out of something that you may not have ever thought of that could help you in critical thinking in the classroom. So um, we have those. We also have, and I don't know, um, I will find out later today and, and um, post something on our social media accounts if our um, special events are full or not. Our, um, we have a family tie-dye event coming up as well as a marbled pumpkin event, but those are by registration only. 
you have to pre-register by calling 870-935-5133 okay. or coming by the library and asking to be added to the list. Uh, but those are by pre-registration only and I have not um, heard recently where the status is of the um, whether or not those are full. Because okay. um, the tie, anytime we do tie-dye, those fill up incredibly fast. I can imagine. We have a lot of great things going on this month for our teens as well. Um, we had, um, and I didn't get to um, stick around for it yesterday um, to see how it went, but we had our um, teen event that is also for young adults that is Adulting 101 last night. Um, and I don't know what their, um, I know they were still working on what their theme was going to be for that event up okay. until um, on Wednesday. So um, we have a great event coming up um, this month because it is Halloween month, which I'm really <laughs> excited about. But it is called Starve a Vampire. Okay. We're doing a blood drive with the American Red Cross. They'll have their blood mobile there at the library on Monday, October 21st, starting at 2 o'clock. So help us this Halloween season by starving those vampires and giving your blood to those in need. Because no. there's always a big need. But happening today for teens um, at 5, 5.30, we have Teen Friday. It's held the first Friday of every month. Um, and every month they do something a little different. Sometimes it's a craft. Sometimes, you know, they just do various things. Sometimes they'll play a game or, you know, just something to, to de-stress okay. our teens. Um, on that first Friday of every month, we have um, our, um, I don't have it on the calendar. Um, every third Saturday of every month, we have our um, ACT prep test. Okay. Our practice, um, you can come take the ACT test as a, a practice test. We also have book clubs um, on, at 3 o'clock. And our um, teen gaming is at 4 o'clock. I'll have to get those added to the calendar when I run back to the library. Um, but we also are having our, every October, we host a young adult author. And our young adult author visit is coming up on October 22nd at seven o'clock at the library in the round room. Um, we're featuring author Meredith Russo, who has written If I Was Your Girl. Also, um, several other books will have um, for sale there at the event. Okay. Um, we will host, um, multiple teens about 300 teens wow. throughout the day at two different events will come about 150 each time will come through the library to um they will have read her book thanks to the friends of the library who provide copies okay. um so each year schools choose students um to be able to be a part of this event and then um, those kiddos get a copy thanks to the friends of the library who purchased those copies. Um, and then they get to read it beforehand so that when the author is there, they can ask questions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of the times it's, how did you become an author? What gave you your ideas for a book? How long did it take you to write this book? How did you get published? You know, mm -hmm. all valid questions, which I always encourage people I know who like to write, who are yeah. authors in their <laughs> own right, to come to these events. Because where else do you get to pick the brain of someone mm -hmm. who is already where you want to be? So asking questions about character development. I don't know if the teens are necessarily thinking on those lines. Yeah, Depending but on we how. do have the um, All Ages event okay. at 7 o'clock that evening. So it'll be from 7 to 8 in the library round room. Um, but yeah, we just, we love hosting the author visits. We also have one, um, I don't know who the author will be, but we always host one for the kids as well. So that one will be coming up in the coming months. So for adults coming up, um, we're going to have our Dungeons and Dragons event tonight at starting at four for five five o'clock from five to seven. So if you've never played Dungeons and Dragons, this is a great opportunity to start. If you have played Dungeons and Dragons, this is a great um, opportunity to join another game. So what I was told is join us for our campaign in October during our Dungeons and Dragons event. So we're going to play October 4th and October 11th. Okay. Currently, we're playing the Minds of, I don't know this word, but go to our website, libraryandjonesboro.org slash events. Um, but Fandilver campaign, fighting off bandits and bugbears and orcs. Okay. The event is held from 5 to 7. Um, so it's a lot of fun to watch them play. Um, they seem to have just tons of fun. 
We also are going to have um, our regular programs that we host every month at the library. We have exercise classes. We have um, our book clubs. Our exercise classes are Tuesdays, Thursdays, and Saturdays. Tuesdays is Mind and Body with Eastern Liberty, where they host. They do Zumba. They do no Zumba. They do yoga. They do Pilates, gyrokinesis, different ways of exercise where you use your own body weight against you or for you, whichever mm -hmm. way you want to look at it. And um, we also have our yoga class that is a half hour class every Thursday at 12.15 from 12.15 to 12.45. And then our Zumba fitness class, because that's a class that wanted to come out first. Our Zumba fitness class is every Thursday at 5.30. And then our Tai Chi class is at 10 a.m. on Saturdays. So a little something different for everyone. Then we have our book clubs. Our romance book club meets on the first Tuesday of the month, our Between the Covers mm -hmm. romance book club. Then we have our young adults book club, Young Adult at Heart. We are grown-ups who like to read young adult <laughs> fiction. That'll be this coming Tuesday at the library at 6 o'clock. We're adding a new book club. It's going to meet um, on the 17th of October for their first meeting, and they're reading the Anne Rule book, The Stranger Beside Me. It's mm -hmm. about Ted Bundy. Oh. And it is called Murder and Mayhem, a true crime book club. And it's going to be meeting on the 17th um, at 6 o'clock at the library. And then we also have our other book clubs that meet. We have the Mike Overall Memorial Book Club. We also have the Novel Lovers Book Club. They meet on the fourth, Sat fourth Tuesday um, of every month at 10. My mouth wants to say different <laughs> um, days this, today. Wow, so, so many activities. We have so much going on. I know I kind of throw it all out there <laughs> at us, but it's just, it's so much fun. We, I love going to a book club because I've always been that person who one likes to read, mm -hmm. but two, I want to talk about it. Yes. You know, um, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> I, I want to see what other people have to say about it. So that's why we started this new book club, Murder and Mayhem. And you never know what, um, what, perspective someone else may have that will help open your mind up to something different like oh I didn't, I didn't pay attention to that I noticed that so we're gonna take a quick break though <laughs> we'll come back we'll finish up our conversation about all that all the activities happening at the Cricket County Jones for Public Library and surrounding um counties and surrounding um branches branches see <laughs> we're we're having a Friday y'all <laughs> so stay tuned we'll be right back after these announcements You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. What can we learn about life from baseball? I'm Mark Merrill with today's Family Minute. Here are three life lessons from one of America's favorite pastimes. First, patience is a virtue. The desire today for instant success is overwhelming. But baseball shows us that even the best players only hit the ball about three out of ten times. So having patience is key to succeeding in baseball and in life. Second, baseball teaches us how to deal with pressure. It takes less than a half a second for a ball to travel from pitcher to catcher. A batter must stay really focused under pressure to hit the ball. Well, with the pressures of daily living, it's important for us to stay focused on what's really important, our relationships. Remember, your family first. Family Minute is made possible by the Kappa Nu Omega chapter of Alpha Kappa Alpha Sorority Incorporated, a nonprofit organization committed to service to all mankind. Kappa Nu Omega Alpha Kappa Alpha on Facebook and K-N-O-M-E-G-A-1908. Dot com. Family Minute is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. KLEK thanks CJ Pepper and the staff of Life Strategies Counseling Incorporated for helping people through hard times in life, such as depression, family issues, stress.
stress, abuse, and more. They offer counseling and therapy for all ages, individuals, families, and groups. They are located at 1217 Stone Street. Phone number 1-866-972-1268 or online at lscihelp.com. House of Details, located at 3915 East Highland in Jonesboro, is a proud supporter of KLEK, offering detailing on any type of vehicle, basic wash, hand wash, shampoo, interior cleaning, waxing, buffering, headlight restoration, pickup, delivery, and more, with the motto of, anything mean, we can clean. Details at 870-273-5187, House of Details on Facebook, and at klekfm.org. Experience the joy with Bishop Adrian R. Rogers, pastor of Fullness of Joy Church, 2120 Thorn Street, Jonesboro, Arkansas, 72401. Wednesday night, Word and Worship, 7 p.m. Prayer, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Sunday Morning Worship, 11 o'clock a.m. And our Sunday night live service at 7 p.m. From the Cape. L-E-K Community Calendar. Future for Felons presents Felons and God's Hands Together Rally, October 5th, 2019, at the corner of Cedar Heights and Melrose Street. Time, 10 o'clock a.m. to 12 o'clock noon. Featured speakers are Senator John Cooper discussing what it means to be in God's hands, Representative Monty Hodges speaking about the importance of standing together, and Pastor Joel Thompson talking about fighting with faith. Music will be provided by K-L-E-K, one or two FM. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM with my special guest, Ms. Brandy Hodges from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. I'm going to just keep on with our conversation about the different activities that are happening. Um, I do want to say there's so many things that everyone, the whole family can enjoy on uh, different time frames. So please check the calendar of events on jo- librarianjonesboro.org. And again, you can, um, how can I say, <laughs> filter <laughs> by branch, location, and age group. <laughs> and we do have some things um, that I have added. There's a couple more things to add um, to the calendar um, of events coming up. But we do have some things happening at our branch locations. So okay. let me just um, clear the filter real quick and select all of our branches, okay. which is easy to do if you have a smartphone or if you're just on your computer. You just go through and select the places you want to look at and then click, click, select, I can't word, mm-hmm. um, submit actually. So we're gonna, at Lepanto, we're gonna have um, on October 7th, a robotics STEAM project. Um, Wiener hosts a stop group every Monday that is an exercise class. Okay. Um, Wiener is also going to host a teen day on October 11th. Um, we have a senior game day okay. at Wiener on the 15th, followed by an adult basic computer class at Wiener on October 17th. So there's just some different uh, varied events at our branch libraries. Um, but we, you know, I want to talk about some of the things that we don't often talk about. Um, I have been really um, delving in, if you will, okay. to our... Um, databases we have at the library um, th- it's something we have but something I have forget to talk about sometimes or we don't really um, promote as often as we should and that's something I'm working on um, remedying um, but we have some great databases so I've really been looking into our educational ones okay. because we just added a new one it's a testing and education database and it it's I would have lived there when I was a student Okay. It has um, activities for um, high school students, college students, and adults. Good. It has um, different videos. I always struggled with math. Always. Okay. And it has videos that you can watch um, from the comfort of your home or okay. wherever um, that shows step-by-step instructions on how to solve different levels of different math problems wow. it has testing so if you're a high school student who is um, taking an AP class and you want to take an AP practice test there is a myriad of AP practice tests you can take history English science you know all you have to do is have a library card is the first step 
and then go and log on with your library card and you can access this great database. There's a module to take the ACT and SAT tests. There's also um, other types of testing, including the LSAT, the GRE, the MCAT. You can take practice tests for um, those who are seeking career help. There are tests that, um, in this testing database, you can take different practice tests. Say you are um, in nursing school, you can take nursing tests. Or say you want to see what the test is like to be a firefighter or a police officer. Or in your, say you're t in real estate school, you're getting ready to take your real estate exam. You can take a real estate practice test. So this database has science help, it's got English help, it's got math help. So mm -hmm. if you have a student, a high school kid, or a college student who's struggling, or maybe they just need an extra help, I had a math tutor all through high school mm -hmm. because I was not, I still am not the best. Don't ask me to do algebra. But I, um, I would have greatly benefited from this free um, service that the library offers. There's also the U.S. citizenship test that you can take, you can practice, okay. take that practice test in this database. Um, we also have another database that is the Arkansas State Driver's Test. You can take that practice test. M maybe you're um, trying to get your CDL license. There's the CDL practice test as well as a motorcycle practice test. So the library has all of these different things. You go to libraryinjonesboro.org slash, I believe it's research, but I am on the website right now. So let me get over to it. So I clicked on, let's see. My phone is very slow this morning, everyone. It's like me. So what I clicked on was the little three bars at the top. Yes. And then I went down to dat research databases. Yes. Research and then click on databases. And then you can search by either subject or alphabetically. So you scroll down to the bottom. It uh -huh. says database list or database by subject and then genealogy database. So we have a lot of genealogy databases as well. So we have those um, in this one as well as separately. But if you go through, America's Genealogy Bank is one that we have where you can research family history. There's Ancestry Library. Now that one, I will note, is only available at Jonesboro and Harrisburg, and you have to be in the building okay. to use those databases. Um, we have American Ancestors as well as an Antiques Reference. So say you get a piece of furniture from a relative and you don't know how old it is or what it might be worth, you can go to our Antiques Reference database and you can look up different pictures and try to find um, the one you the piece you have we have children auto repair which we always had those books laying around the house because my dad always would kind of work on our cars um, whenever he needed to change the brakes or change the oil um, but if you um, don't have the books around your house like uh, my dad always did you can go to the database that is called Chilton auto repair and look up your car and that way you can find out what part you need or you know a little bit more about your automobile then is the driving test practice exams and um, we have EBSCO databases which are wonderful to use I've used EBSCO a lot um, whenever if you have a kid doing a research project or um, you know, maybe you just want to look up some facts or you heard something about um, a holiday or an event and you just want to learn more information. Um, for example, the library participates in Business Expo every year. Okay. And a few years ago, or not a few years ago, last year, was um, our um, New Orleans theme, our Mardi Gras theme. Mm -hmm. And so I used our EBSCO database, which is magazine and journal articles. So you, I just typed in Mardi Gras and it pulled you know, a whole list of newspaper articles okay. that have Mardi Gras as a, as a subject or, you know, it's in a sentence okay. in that article. So say you're doing a, a research paper on George Washington. You could type in George Washington and it'll pull up all sorts of information, journal articles, magazine articles, different um, resources that you can use. Um, then we have um, First Search that has a lot of different gov government publications. Um, Fold3 is another one of our genealogy um, databases and it searches military records. And so I was able to use that to find um, a draft card of one of my relatives. I just typed in his name and um, his year of birth and was able to find that information. Gail's Discovering is another really great database to um, do research with. So if you have a child 
um, who needs to do a research paper, and if they're anything like I was sometimes, Mom, I've got this paper and it's due tomorrow. And you have to do the work. Um, but Heritage Quest is another genealogy database. Mango Languages is a wonderful database. If you're looking to, maybe you're in, in college at one of our local universities and you're looking to um, just learn more about a language you're studying. Maybe you're taking Spanish or another language and you um, want to learn more or have um, a child because I've always heard that children are it's easier for them to learn a second or third language mm -hmm. than it is for adults to. Yeah, Mango yeah. Languages <laughs> is a great database where you can learn German, you can learn Spanish, you can learn French, you can learn pirate. Okay. Pirate is one of the languages that you can learn how to speak. Wow. But it shows you step by step and what's great about these databases is you do lo log in with your library card. Okay. So you have to have a library card in order to use our databases. Um, but it's free, easy. Miss Quivila has one. It's free and easy to get a library card. Um, but you, what it's important about having your library card is it keeps track of you. So say okay. you made it to lesson three. Well, you don't have to start over at lesson one when you come back to the Mango Languages database. It picks up where you left off. Um, in addition to that one, we have Newsbank, which has um, newspapers and magazines from around the world, um, over 850 of them. I'm not choosing favorites with our databases, but Novelist is one of my favorite, favorite, favorite databases. Is there another word for favorite? Um, but it is, if you're a reader, or maybe you're not a reader, but you found this one book you really liked, or you found this one author you really liked. But maybe they just wrote one or two books. They're not. Ugh, I don't really like to read, but I like that book. Okay. Novelist. You could put in the title of the book. You could put in the genre of the book. You could put in the theme of the book. You could put in the author of the book, and it will pull books like that book. Oh, okay. It is such a great resource for. Those who are maybe in a rut, maybe you have read and you pick up books and you're like, Ugh, I just, I don't like it. So if you have a book or a genre or a title that you really just really did like, this is a great way to um, look at other things like that. Or maybe there's a subject you want to look at. Maybe um, I've been uh, researching uh, the Holocaust recently because okay. I read a book, of course, I read a nonfiction book. Um, about the Holocaust and that just pushed me to learn more because I haven't really studied it since I was in high school more than 20 years ago. Wow. So I used my good buddy novelist and I found other books about that same subject. Okay. Um, so it's just, it's a great resource um, for all ages. Um, ProQuest Central is another database we have. Reference USA is a great one to, that searches businesses. I know a lot of small businesses have um, told us that they use Reference USA to um, find other business like theirs um, or just other business. If you want to learn more about yeah. businesses, Reference USA, Sanborn Maps of Arkansas is um, a great resource to look at large aerial maps. You can look at um, maps down to um, from a scale of 50 feet to one inch. So. You, it's just a great resource to look at, look at maps of Arkansas. Uh -huh. um, Value Line is a great um, database for stocks and mutual funds, just to learn more, do some research. And then World Book Complete is um, for kids. Uh, it's got ebooks, ways of learning. Um, it's encyclopedias, World Book encyclopedias. So it's got a lot of information. But I just wanted to go over because that's not something we often or maybe I've never brought it up, but that new database of testing and education database is such a great resource for everyone because it has so many things that can help you. Um, and what's um, what I liked about it is you go on and it has different quadrants and you say, okay, well, I need to learn more about high school. Okay, now do I want to learn more about practice tests? Do I want to learn more about... Um, advanced, you know, like college entrance exams. Um, it has just, it leads you through the path. Um, other um, things we offer at the library that we do talk about um, is our ebook collection, okay. which um, since I was here last has grown from 
about 18,000 to 65,000 titles available for our patrons. Not only have we added, um, joined this Arkansas Digital Library Consortium where we blended, we merged, if you will, our collection with other libraries collections. Um, the parent company, Libby, has now added magazines. So not only can you check out eBooks and audiobooks, you can now download magazines through Libby. And because Subscriptions can become a little cumbersome, and then who wants to stockpile? Exactly. Magazines? I have some at home, my friends, <laughs> magazines, and now I'm like, huh. um, I donate them to the friends of the library. So if you ever have books or magazines that are um, ones you've read already and maybe they're collecting dust, maybe you won't ever read them again, you can donate them to the Friends of the Library Bookshop um, there at the library. Just bring them in um, to the Public Library at 315 West Oak Avenue and the Friends of the Library will add them to their bookshop and they're very reasonable prices. I believe magazines are 10 cents. So um, maybe you like to read paper, I do, you like to read paper magazines because um, I can carry them with me when I'm going somewhere and just pull it out, flip it, flip, flip through it, pull out pages to put in my cookbook. <laughs> I do that. I do. Oh, good. But you can also <laughs> download your magazines. Country Living, there's um, Country Woman. Let me just pull up magazines. So it says magazines are here, um, and there are 88 magazines, including 41 Lifestyle, um, 27 women's interest, 16 fashion, and more. So I know I've seen um, just as it's um, trying to, I've got the spinning wheel over here, um, as it's trying to do it, but I've, I've already downloaded, I think, A Taste of Home because it had like soup on the cover, okay. and I am <laughs> very ready for soup season. Um, but yes, so here's the list startups, there's um, Newsweek, Motor Trend, Women's Health, Family Handyman, which I probably will download that one because I like to be a handy lady, um, <laughs> Reader's Digest, L, Guideposts, um, Card Making and Paper Crafts, Ola Magazine, Quilters World, Marie Claire, PC Gamer, wow. Us Weekly. You know, no matter what your interests are, the library has you covered through our Libby app. So, um, in, in case people don't know what Libby is, Libby is um, our ebook and audiobook and now magazine platform that we offer free to anyone who has a library card. All you do is have your library card number, which is the full um, number on the back of your card, as well as your PIN number, which is the last four digits of your phone number. I have the Ibi, Ibi, Libby app and I used it um, to listen to an audiobook during a time when I had a little break between schoolwork and I was working on a sewing project. So mm -hmm. I would turn the book on and then I found myself actually listening to the book more than watching TV and I really enjoyed it. And now I want to look up more books by this author because I realized that the, some of the characters actually carry over to previous and past. That's where like, novelists can help you. <laughs> so... I definitely want to look up that author again. I really enjoyed the book, and I enjoyed how the person that was reading or narrating, they, you know, threw in voices for the That's character. <laughs> one thing I always say, um, don't let an, a reader turn you away from a great book. There have been a couple of books that I start. I'm a big audio book listener, and there have been a couple of books that I've started, and I just didn't like the narrator. <laughs> um, and I love it when they use, like, if there's a male and female perspective, I love when they use different actors to do the different voices. Um, but one of my favorite books was a book that I just didn't like it, but I just made myself keep listening okay. until that person became the character. Okay. Um, but yes, a, a lot of my favorite books are when I get a nonfiction book and it's read by the author. Those That's are awesome. some of the most fun books. Because like Tina Fey wrote a book called called Bossy Pants a few years ago, but she <laughs> reads it, and it's just no one else could read that book. No, but yes, I love listening to books. But you you do have to um, just don't give up on a book just because okay. the a lot of times it's like oh that was a bad choice book. <laughs> well, I actually love the particular one that I, I listen to. I actually like the narrator um, because they add That's a little right. flair. Um, it was a little funny listening to the female voices, however, 
I feel like I got to know the characters. Yeah, it's like you're their friend. Yes, um, they picked up on, they were able to kind of add that, their personality. Um, like this particular book had an older lady who was very stuffy and just frumpy all mm-hmm. the time. And just grumpy all the time. So he was able to, I'm guessing it was a he, was able to kind of capture that character where you kind of had a visual, you were able to visualize what you think, you know, she would have looked like in her demeanor, and it, it was so it was fun. <laughs> yeah, if you have uh, another database we have is Access 360, and I always like to tell parents, if you have a kiddo who just, maybe they just don't like to read, maybe you can download an audio book okay. um, in their age level um, that is through our Access 360 database and listen to it together in the car. Okay. You know, that way you're listening to it together, and you can then talk about what you listen to. Um, just a great way to spend together time together as a family. Okay. Um, but yeah, we um, that's these are just some of the things that it's why it's a great value to get a library card. It's yes. uh, it's something that's free to have. You don't pay anything if you stop by the library and say, "Hey, what do I do to get a library card?" Um, you have to present a photo ID with your current mailing address. If your photo ID does not have your current mailing address. You know, bring in, you know, I like to tell people that beforehand so they know to bring in, bring in a light bill. If you have your checkbook, maybe, okay. if you are like me and you write checks, and it has your current mailing address okay. on it, but your driver's license doesn't have it. Just anything, at least a light bill that shows where you live, um, along with your photo ID. And then kids of any age are welcome to get a library card um, as long as they have their parent or guardian okay. with them when they get one. So, please get a library card. There's so much to do. You... You know, um, I always talk about the different study rooms that are available. Um, one of my friend's daughters came down over the weekend, and they went to the library and they got to see Ida. Oh, I love it. <laughs> so we're going to take another break. When we come back, we'll talk about some other little nooks and crannies of the library. So stay tuned. We'll be right back after these announcements. <laughs> You're listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. We'll be right back. We're back with Money Matters. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. Technology giant Apple Inc. has been ordered to pay at least $32.5 million in consumer refunds to settle Federal Trade Commission charges that it billed parents for items their children purchased in mobile apps without their permission. The FTC says Apple failed to alert parents that entering a password would result in approval of up to 15 minutes of unlimited in-app purchases. Parents were unaware of the charges, which mostly consisted of payments for virtual currency used in games. This currency can cost anywhere from $1 to $100 per charge. One unlucky parent discovered her daughter had spent $2,600 on one app. Apple responded to the complaints it has received by agreeing to adjust their billing practices. The company will take measures to make sure it has obtained proper consent from consumers before charging them for items sold in mobile apps. I'm Alfred Edmund Jr. for Money Matters, a product of American Urban Radio Networks. Money Matters is brought to you by Bancorp South, offering checking, savings, loans, credit cards, and wealth management. Five locations in Jonesboro to serve you. www.bancorpsouth.com or 870-972-9800. Money Matters is brought to you by the Gears Foundation, a nonprofit organization providing students with assistance in their academic and career pursuits. Gears Foundation on Facebook, Gears underscore Inc. on Instagram, and the Gears Foundation at gmail.com. Help keep Kelly K on the air. Give now through our fall fund drive. We are seeking 100 donors to give at least $20 per month. But we are happy with any gift, large or small. Come by our studio at 1411 Franklin Street in Jonesboro. Call us at 870-277-1080 or visit our website, klekfm.org. Or you can use cash app, dollar sign, K-L-E-K-F-M. Or text KLEK1. Send it to 44321. 
The McDaniel Law Firm, 400 South Main Street in Jonesboro, is a firm believer in justice and equality for the minority community. The McDaniel Law Firm has fought for our rights for over 44 years. The McDaniel Law Firm offers legal help for wrongful death, as well as trucking and automobile accidents. Bobby and Brett McDaniel are available for a free consultation at 870-336-4747 or at www.mcdaniellawyers.com. Experience the job with Bishop Adrian R. Rogers, pastor of Fullness of Joy Church, 2120 Thorn Street, Jonesboro, Arkansas, 72401. Wednesday night, Word and Worship, 7 p.m. Prayer, Thursday night at 7 p.m. Sunday School, 9.30 a.m. Sunday Morning Worship, 11 o'clock a.m. And our Sunday night live service at 7 p.m. KLEK 102.5 FM wants to be active in the community. If you or your organization is hosting a community service event, we would like to know about it and be a part of it. KLEK will promote your event on air, online, and on social media. KLEK personalities may also attend the event and provide music and or entertainment. Certain restrictions and availability may apply. If you or your organization would like to partner with KLEK to make the Jonesboro community a better place, call 870 or email us at klek at klekfm.org. In order for a community announcement or church announcement to be aired on KLEK 102.5 FM, we ask that the announcement be sent at minimum one week in advance. Thank you for supporting KLEK 102.5 FM. KLEK 102.5 FM salutes small businesses. Small businesses promote local character and success keeping money in the local economy, local jobs, entrepreneurship, community well-being, and so much more. Contact us today to learn more on how your small business could be featured on KLEK for as little as $25 per month. And now back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM. Welcome back to Community Conversations on KLEK 102. Point five FM with my special guest, Ms. Brandy Hodges from the Craig County Jonesboro Public Library. I hope that you all have been taking notes and marking your calendars for all of the events that are coming up. And then also, you know, listen to the um, information she presented about the different databases and um, things that are available at the library. The library has so many little nooks and crannies. Like before we went to break, we're going to talk about um, where there's Ida, of course, but there's these different study rooms and mm-hmm. so tell us a little more about some things that so if you haven't been to the library in a while or maybe you know you just are like i used to be before i started working there i you run in i would run in and grab a book and i would run back out mm-hmm. you know i would check it out first of course <laughs> uh, but we um we have a great genealogy collection it's the only collection that never gets weeded okay. at the library it will never get smaller it will only get bigger because we're always adding to that. Um, we have um, the Friends of the Library Bookshop back in the, the back south corner of the library. We have our children's library where Ida the Hedgehog lives. <laughs> um, she has a fabulous larger tank. Her house has pretty much doubled in size. Wow. Um, we also have um, study rooms. We have um, four in the back and seven in the front where you no reservations are needed for those rooms. Um, if you see an open room, hop in it. Um, I know in the back it used to be our um, hour long reservations, but I don't know if that's still okay. in place, especially during, um, you know, getting to final season. I know we're not there yet, but getting to final <laughs> season, you know, if you have, um, if you're friends with a college student, maybe, you know, a college student, um, <laughs> remind them that there are other options Mm -hmm. you know uh, if there's someone who likes that quiet space a lot of people i know will go to coffee shops and places Mm -hmm. and study because i always needed background noise in order to concentrate but there are a lot of people who have to have that quiet and we do have study rooms with doors we also have uh, meeting spaces we have our round room we have the Civic League room and we have the William Shakespeare room oh. that you can call and reserve those spaces if you have, maybe you have a, a large study group that needs mm-hmm. to meet. Um, you know, we can fit um, up to 15 in our smaller rooms and then up to 100 in our large study room. I believe, not study room, but room rooms um, with just chairs. Okay. Chairs and tables, it's much less. 
but we um, we do have those rooms. Um, all of our spaces are free to borrow. You just um, for the bigger spaces, Miss Jordan Wilson is our assistant business manager, okay. and you have to borrow the room through the library and get added to our calendar. Okay. Because our rooms do stay very busy. Especially um, round room. <laughs> yeah, we we do not borrow those rooms out in um, June, July, or August okay. because um, we use them almost every day wow. um, for the programming that we do as a library. Um, but we do um, have those spaces that are free and available. Um, we have our adult services desk with a business center where okay. you can come and use a computer Monday through Sunday, you know, every day of the week. We also have um, computers that are just for those doing business. So we have the ones where you can use social media or shop online or do whatever it is you need to do. But then we have some that are just for working on work or doing job applications or mm -hmm. doing homework, whatever you need to do that's a business related. And I, think, I don't think people know. Some people do, some don't. If you're in the library, you can use the Wi-Fi for free. Well, you can, it's called bring, library. Just bring your own device if you want. Um, you can bring, so say you have a laptop, but you work from home or you work from an office, but, you know, there's a problem with the office or you just want to get a different atmosphere. Yes. You know, bring your computer to the library, use our Wi-Fi, get some work done. We do have um, printers. We have a fax machine. Um, it is a dollar a page to use the fax machine, okay. and that includes your cover sheet. So every page is a dollar each. Okay. Um, but we also have printing um and then um stop by you know check out a book check out a movie we have newspapers you know grab a newspaper off the stand and, and read it while you're there with us we have some new seating that was added in the past couple of years and we renovated this spring so um a lot of changes have taken place if you haven't been in the library since say last year i haven't been in years so i know it totally different place yeah than what i remember <laughs> All right, so please go to the library, check out all of the different activities, go to their calendar of events, and find another location. We've talked, and we talk about this all the time, um, make an adventure out of going to another branch. Um, you and the kids come up with a topic, uh, idea you want to research, or I don't know, look up and go to another branch and look up books and find something locally that you can uh, incorporate into your adventure. Well, we have our branches in Wiener, Harrisburg, Mark Tree, Lepanto, Caraway, Lake City, and Monette. Okay. So, you know, you can learn more about the town that you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of great history in our in our town. Um, but as well as that, we have, um, I'll be in Lake City with our branch librarian, Miss Donna, on okay. um, the 17th doing an event there in Lake City. So, come and see us. Okay. That'd be awesome. Again, check out some local businesses. I love to shop small, shop local. So go to the library, shop local. Check out the downtown. <laughs> uh, when I go to these different branch cities, it's usually during the day when a lot of the little shops are closed. I'm like, oh, I want to go in there. I know. <laughs> you know, so we have some great towns. Um, and what's what something important I like to note is the reason our branch libraries, one of the reasons is books and getting to go to your local library and that's wonderful i love that was my favorite thing growing up in a small town but in a lot of our smaller communities that's the only place you can use the wi-fi for free mm -hmm. you know and a lot of us we don't have the internet at home mm -hmm. and maybe you can't afford it or maybe it's just not something that you want to have in your home but you need to use it maybe the kids need to use it for school so our local libraries are vitally important to families who live in those communities. Yes, ma'am. So go out and support your local library. Tell the librarian hi. Take the kids out. Enjoy the reading activities, the exercise classes, just whatever else they have available. And if you go onto our website and you see a book, a movie, any of our things that you can check out that maybe you're in Caraway, but it's in Wiener, and you're like, oh, that's not where I live. Uh, you can request it and our courier service runs Monday through Friday and give us a couple days after you request it and it will be in your local library on the shelf with your name on it. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. You never know. You just might meet a friend. Also, at some of these adult events, you might meet somebody you never met before and then develop a friendship or something and you just never know what can happen at the library. Maybe you never know. I'd rather do a document, not a document, a movie. <laughs> get the uh, teen kid, the teens to... Our teen advisory board, get them... Make a, make a little movie about all the fun things that happen, that can happen at the library. <laughs> I always tell people, it's a, it is a fun place, and I don't just say that because I work there. It's, it's so much fun to 
delve into a new book and escape for a few hours into um, a place that doesn't exist anywhere but that book in your mind. Well, thank you so much, Brandy, for joining us on this Friday. Everyone has a great and blessed day. I will say stay cool, but it's nice and chilly. Thank you for listening to Community Conversations on KLEK 102.5 FM, a program focusing on the people working to make the Jonesboro community a better place while offering viewpoints from all sides of the issues. The views expressed in this program are those of the participants and do not necessarily reflect the views of KLEK 102.5 FM, the voice of Arkansas Minority.